This hair is fucking ridiculous, y'all. Hello, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope you're well. So a couple weeks ago, we hit a thousand subscribers. That was crazy. We did a fundraiser. We ended up raising $622. I got a mullet. It's been a, it's been a great couple weeks. But to top it all off, just the final little the thing that we're gonna do is a quick Q&A because y'all have been showing up, giving me love and kind of enjoying the content and being great with each other. I thought I would try and give back. I thought it was high time to just answer your questions and hopefully give as much value back to you as possible. And these questions cover everything from like personal stuff to like music marketing. So I think it's a nice little breadth of topics. So let's get, let's get right into it. <laughs> How do I build connections outside of the cringy self promo shit? Star emoji. Very, dude, this question is great. And I've done a ton of thinking about it over the past couple of years. Basically the answer that I've landed on is be active in communities. For example, I love Aries music um, and his content on YouTube, that was wonderful. One of my first sort of introductions into any sort of community was the Aries Discord. And through that, I actually met uh, quite a few of the people I'm making music with currently. I ended up gaining quite a bit of a following from there doing a remake and actually learning a ton just from being a part of that community. Long story short, the best way to build connections is to be active in the scene that you wanna be a part of. I've been wanting to get into music, any tips? Yes, whether or not you're learning an instrument, a DAW, or just trying to sing, do covers and remakes of songs that you love. Maybe not like your favorite songs because when you do covers of those, it might ruin it a little bit, but songs that you really like. <laughs> the remakes I have done have been the biggest learning experiences out of anything I've ever done. Just trying to replicate sounds, you get to know your DAW so well, especially on an instrument as well. Like you really just get to know the ins and outs. You get to use your ear. It's kind of hand-eye coordination, but with your music. Play things you wanna play. What kind of setup do you have for your gear? Okay, this is a really important question. Right now, I have a Focusrite 2i audio interface to plug my mic into and my guitar. Um, I've got a Rode NT1A right here. <laughs> I've got some Sennheiser 380 Pros, and I've got a MacBook Pro 2015, and I use Logic Pro to produce. Now, I've got a cup, like a good, an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar. I really want to emphasize here when you're going to like build a setup, really do it one step at a time. I have accumulated this stuff over like three, four, five years. The first thing I had was the laptop. My next purchase was the headphones, which I actually would advise against because I do most of my mixing on Apple earbuds now because that's what most people listen to. They like boost the bass end and shave out high mids. When you mix on Apple earbuds, you actually get like a really tight low end. And then I will switch to more accurate headphones to really dial in those mid frequencies. Basically what you wanna do when you are buying new things is fill gaps in your workflow. So where you feel like you could have something that would really improve your process and really speed things up, either sound wise or just workflow wise, that's where you should invest. And when you invest, invest in like the lowest step up. So let's say you've been recording on your Apple headphones mic. The next step for me would be invest in a Yeti, which is a USB mic. So there's no extra little bits and bobs you got to get. Just workflow stays the same. Steps like that. Only invest in things that you're actually going to use, especially if you're tight on cash. And if you're not tight on cash, still do that shit because you don't want to clutter your space. All right. Also, an important thing to note is that mixing is everything. If you're looking to buy stuff to upgrade your sound, keep in mind a lot of records are recorded on really garbage shit. For my music, for reference, all of my stuff was recorded on a Blue Yeti up until winter, which the intro vocals and all the guitars on that song were recorded on Apple earbuds and my shitty Marshall practice amp. And the rest of the song was on the Rode NT1A and then you was the Rode NT1A and following. So you can do a ton with mixing. Um, so before upgrading your gear, make sure you can mix. Do you love y'all king? I'm, I'm your roommate. I I down. Yes. <laughs> What's the story behind the IG name? Do you do any promo? Oh my God. I could talk about promo for an hour and I might do a separate video on this. I don't do any paid promo. The only paid thing I've ever done was Lusion. The TikTok artist used to be really active on YouTube. He was doing song reviews and I paid him five bucks to review one of my songs. And that was actually like where I got my first sort of audience outside of my friend group. Be fans of smaller accounts. That can be really helpful in um, building nice little connections there as well. Outside of that, upload to Spotify four weeks early, contact some blogs if you're feeling up to it, and um, just make sure you have a lot of different types of media surrounding your songs. So videos and live stuff, 
all that sort of thing. Today I woke up with all my Best album ever. A lot of these are tied, but basically any of the last three Kendrick Lamar albums, Sports and You're Gonna Miss It All by Modern Baseball and Welcome to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. What do you produce in? The Jick. <laughs> What's your vocal chain? Um, I'm gonna do a full video on this, but basically EQ, DSer, compressor with a slow attack, quick release, a multi-band compressor with a quick attack, medium release, a compressor with a quick attack, medium release, and then another EQ and a DSer. Where do I get my clothes? Either thrift shops or merch. Biggest music inspiration, modern baseball. What do I do for a living? For a long time, I was a behavior consultant. So using applied behavior analysis principles to teach um, kids with autism how to sort of fit into this neurotypical society we have built while still being able to be themselves and have fun the way they want to. I did that for about two years and I still really identify with that role, but um, the way the company kind of went was not really my vibe. So I quit and now I'm doing this full time, um, which is amazing. It's really awesome to provide like a bunch of value to you guys, um, or at least try to. <laughs> Favorite synth plugin, Serum or Logic's retro synth plugin, that's insane. What do I love doing besides music? Uh, probably skateboarding, <laughs> it's probably like my main form of exercise. Surfing, watching Netflix, and I've been playing like a shitload of chess recently, like online chess, <laughs> random. So much fun. When Corona is over, will you be doing any shows? If so, where do you plan on having them? Yes, Melbourne will be the first show, hopefully like when things start opening up a little bit again. Um, and we can have mosh pits legally than that. How do I come up with interesting melodies? Ooh, this is a great question. So a lot of this is just kind of noodling around and like taking things from other artists that I really love and making them kind of new. Something that helps a lot if you're stuck and you can't really come up with one melody for a song you're working on is just shift where the melody starts. For example, Como, I was really stuck because I was starting the melody on the two. So what I did was I shifted it back and I tried starting on the one. And then where we ended up was starting on the four of the measure previously. And that's where you get the, you don't want to talk. And then it all kind of comes in together. That helped a ton with that song. Highly recommend just shifting that around. Shout out Andrew Huang for the tip on that. Do I speak more than one language? Yes, I speak Spanish. How did I get into making music? I've always been really into just making up songs. Like there's videos of me as like a three year old, just making up songs about my dinosaur toys and stuff like that. But my parents put me into guitar lessons when I was like seven and I'm still awful. <laughs> Least favorite thing about making music? Probably the fact that I have to be like inside sitting down a lot of the time and like alone. <laughs> I do really value alone time, so sometimes it's quite nice, but it's good to switch it up and like be able to make music with other people. So I'm looking forward to that. I really enjoy jobs where it's like a lot of movement and like hands-on work, which is why working with kids was so awesome. I guess everything in moderation is important. How cold was your butthole? Okay, that's all the questions we're going to do. Thank you so much again to all of you for subscribing and coming along on this little journey with me. If you haven't already, join the Discord and come hang out, make some art, and uh, play Among Us with us and shit. So yeah, that's it. If you didn't get water at the start of this video, fucking go get some of that shit right now. And then go outside with it. Get some fresh ass air. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Yeah, that's it. I'm Bryce and thanks for being part of my life.